What I love. Hello, I'm Scruffy, and today I'm delving back into Pikmin 3 after recently getting to look through its sound bank. This game may be nearly six years old now, but its soundscape still holds secrets for the discerning listener and things to teach the aspiring sound designer. So don some headphones and let's boot up this classic once again. I'm breaking this video up by the functions and sources of these sounds, and the further we go into this video, the deeper into the game we go, and the more we get into the actual process of creating these sounds. So if you're fine with a little bit of Pikmin 3 spoilers, I really recommend watching to the end. Number 1. Easter Eggs Sometimes sounds are, or appear to be, downright hidden just for fun. Right off the bat, we can hear something interesting in Pikmin 3's title screen. If you wait for the full main theme to finish playing, the musical texture never fully stops, but it does allow a bed of environmental noises to fade in. The bed varies depending on the time of day depicted. In the daylight version of the title screen, we hear mainly mixed bird song with some soft, rippling water from the brook. Nothing out of the ordinary. But in the sunset version, along with the water, we hear various types of crickets and frogs, cicadas, and even, very occasionally and faintly, the bleat of a sheep. Maybe I'm getting overzealous about the bleat of a sheep, but this is its only instance in the game, to my knowledge. It feels like a little Easter egg that once again begs the question of whether the animals making these sounds are the real-life animals we know, hiding out of sight, or the fictional cast of animals that inhabits this game. But I believe this also introduces a pillar of Pikmin 3 that all these bits of trivia will emphasize. Quirkiness. Pikmin 3 has peculiar moments, unexpected designs, and an air of playfulness it inherited from the previous games in the series. And just because the game has remarkably realistic looking environments and the largest credited sound team in a Pikmin game to date, doesn't mean they seek to create the most lifelike soundscape they can. They can throw in fun little details or create sounds from interesting sources to add personality in ways that visuals alone could not. For example, drinking juice at the end of the day normally comes with a few hearty gulping noises. But on occasion, just for a lark, you can hear the copites use a straw instead. And when you collect a medal in mission mode, the Pikmin have a message for each tier of metal that, while hard to hear in Pikmin language, is discernible when you slow it down 100%. Good, great, excellent, perfect. And a few more Easter eggs during gameplay. When you're traveling with only the three Copaite leaders alone in story mode, they'll occasionally sing part of their planet's musical motif together. A group of Pikmin left alone in a story area can occasionally start to hum along to the area's theme and a 100 Pikmin group made of 20 of each type of Pikmin will occasionally sing part of the Pikmin 3 main theme. Now, I differentiate between these Easter eggs and number two, references. I differentiate the two because while the following sounds are secretly referencing other Nintendo franchises, they are not emphasized as secrets to find. In fact, some of them take on new contexts entirely. When the SS Drake is first flying away from Kopai, we can faintly hear a little triadic series of blips. Name PNF 404. This nods to Mario moving in Mario Bros with the same little musical effect. Quaint, yet heroic. Next, when something goes horribly wrong with the SS Drake, we can hear something goes the dog from Duck Hunt laughing at us. Here, yes, the sound carries that history, but it's being recontextualized as a sort of user interface malfunction sound. And during the first day, after Alf is finished receiving a transmission from Brittany, he pockets his copad with a familiar sound. The sound of pocketing something in Animal Crossing. As I discussed in my sound trivia video on Pikmin 2, these referential sounds serve multiple functions. They're a convenient fix to a missing sound, they show off Nintendo's vast canon and sound library, and perhaps at the cost of a little immersion, they give fans of many of the company's series a little aha moment, while still giving the sound itself a new role to fill. Speaking of, number three, immersion. 
The opposite of using referential sounds is creating a new sound in order to increase the feeling of being specifically in Pikmin 3's environment, which, evidently, is most of the sound bank. Pikmin 3 reflects a question that a game with three-dimensional audio needs to address. Where is the audio listener? That is, where is the ear? Where is the point from which sounds are actually translated to the player? Usually the camera is this audio listener, since it's also our source of vision. But every so often in Pikmin 3, the camera changes to the character's perspective when they're using the Copad camera. And there's a little immersive detail they added to this feature. When you're underwater using the camera, you can hear some pretty in-depth air tank sounds to further let you know that you are exactly where your player character is, seeing the same things and feeling the same notion of being underwater. One other little detail based on environment. If you're outside, you'll hear little updates from the day timer telling you the onset of noon, sunset, and the final 10 moments of the day. But if you're in a cave, these timer sounds get muffled and modulated slightly in pitch, as though there's some distance and interference between your player character and the day outside. These are small details, but they didn't have to be added. I appreciate that they made the soundscape that much more cohesive. And before we continue, spoilers begin from here on out, so if you haven't finished Pikmin 3, feel free to stop here, and thank you for watching. If you have finished Pikmin 3, prepare to get a bit more technical in our late game sound design talk. Number 4. Cartoonish Clarity What do I mean by cartoonish clarity? Well, I'm borrowing the term clarity from James Buhler, David Neumeyer, and Rob Deeming. For them, having clarity is making sense to the audience, being accessible so that a soundtrack doesn't require excess attention. Creating a soundtrack that has clarity is more central to film and video games than fidelity, or sounds that faithfully represent the real world. Nintendo represents that concept in every way it can to make gameplay clear, including in sounds. For instance, in Pikmin 3, when you break the rock that a Scutterchuck is carrying, it cries out, followed by a brief bird-like sound. You know, that sound when a character has birds around their head because they're dizzy. That sound comes from cartoons, and it's not nearly as realistic as Pikmin 3's environment or soundscape, but it enhances the idea that the Scutterchuck is dazed, and this is your chance to defeat it. That, for me, is cartoonish clarity. A couple other examples. A rolling ball bursting through a rock wall includes a sound of a bowling ball hitting pins. Skitter leaves faintly produce this chime sound as they move and when they die, as if highlighting that sort of magic sense of what looked like a leaf suddenly springing to life. Desiccated skitter leaves have a desiccated version of that. You know, even the sounds of plucking Pikmin sprouts make it cartoonishly clear what your action is, and those have been around the whole series. I think one of my favorite examples is the music of the Scornet Maestro. It's a mutilated sample of a harp, put through some sort of ensemble filter to make it sound insect-like and distorted. Yet it still maintains a hypnotic quality that not only controls the Scornet army, but also represents the progress through and danger of this boss's main attack. This gesture orders the spiral formation early in the battle. This gesture orders the crowd formation halfway through the battle, and this one I love that one orders the surrounding circle formation late in the game. The Scornet Maestro's harp mechanics mirror your role as a Pikmin leader. The harp is used to command Scornets, much like the whistle commands Pikmin. And these musical sound effects highlight gameplay keynotes rather well. Now, speaking of noise-making animals, number five, creature vocals. Did you know that most of the creatures in the catalog of Pikmin 3 had their vocalizations created from voice actors? With some of them, it's kind of obvious. <coughs> And with others, it's evident that some pitch editing and effects went into crafting the sound. Wow. 
And there's one group of sounds that appear to be from an unused or unfinished enemy that appear to be unedited howls from a voice actor. Anyway, I wanted to show you two of these creature voices that I can reverse engineer. The puffy blowhog does make some pretty complicated balloon-like noises. But when it's just idling, it offers a glimpse at one effect added on top of the voice actor. This silly sound is a voice actor giving a sort of lazy groan, and then a second layer of that sound with the pitch shifted down 16 semitones, or an octave and a major third. The formant of the second layer is also slightly increased. Formant is the prominent frequencies that result from the specific shape of a space, in this case, the human vocal tract. Reshaping our vocal tract to change formants is how we form different vowels. And changing the formant of a voice without changing the pitch can seriously affect the tonal quality of that voice. Finally, the sound's pitch wavers very rapidly, ever so slightly, giving it that alien touch this vocalization needs. Altogether, this is my recreation. The second voice I believe I can reverse engineer is Rock Pikmin. This one's a little simpler. For most samples of any type of Pikmin in Pikmin 3, it's just someone's voice sped up twofold. But Rock Pikmin occasionally have a second step to create an extra gravelly quality to it. This is achieved with tremolo, which wavers the volume of this sound clip differently in the middle and side channels of the sound. Set the tremolo fast enough, and we have our modified Rock Pikmin sound. It's surprising how few experimental steps it takes to turn the human voice into some completely new and strange creature. And speaking of new and strange creatures, number six, otherworldly effects. Specifically, the Plasm Wraith. I had to talk about this boss's fascinating collection of associated sounds. It has a host of horrific, otherworldly noises in its compendium, ranging from twinkling effects of unknown origin, to slowed down chimes when it revives its initial form, to a collection of horror trope sound effects, which are made by striking or strumming the strings of a piano with a rubber mallet, to this odd semi-liquid noise. This is the noise I wanted to talk about. It's definitely a recording of some type of mud-like substance frothing, but something's weird about it, like an extra layer of droning pitch that you can hear in the decay of the first sound. How is that effect created? Well, it's an effect called convolution reverb. Have you ever been inside your shower room and realized that singing a particular note caused the whole room to resonate? That's a formant. Remember formants? They shape vowels in our voices, but formants in rooms are pitches that are augmented in resonance because of the unique way a room's shape bounces sound around. Each room emphasizes specific frequencies and absorbs others, giving each room a unique reverb with uniquely emphasized formants. Convolution reverb is a process that steals a sample of real reverb and uses it to synthesize reverb without needing the room. To do this, we must create what's called an impulse response, or IR. We go into the room and record some very clean acoustic action, such as just a crack of pure white noise. We call this exciting the room. Here's an example from a kitchen. This recording is the IR. It's a clean, pure sample of how that room reacts to sound. The convolution processor then uses the IR to create a new function, its own reverb sound effect that can be used to treat any new sound. So now, your favorite cave, your favorite kitchen, your favorite garbage can is ready to reverberate any sound file on the go in this nifty little digital package. However, the convolution processor can take more than just real recorded impulse responses. In fact, it can process any sound into a space for other sounds to reverberate inside. We can manufacture IRs to create otherworldly effects, like this plasm wraith sound does. While I'm not advanced in the field enough to reverse engineer the IR that was used in this sound, 
I was able to hear the formants in it well enough to create my own IR that mimics it. It sounds like this. And when applied to a sample I found of churning mud, it sounds like this. It's not a perfect recreation, of course, but it is decidedly creepy, and it shows how this mud sound is now exciting the false room created by my own crafted impulse response. This is a powerful tool to change the imagined space or source of a sound. If the plasm wraith used just an unedited frothing sound, we get that it's made of a viscous gold-like substance, sure, but adding this convolution reverb to it makes it all the more otherworldly, like it possesses features or powers beyond the usual scope of enemies in the game. And like all these sound oddities in Pikmin 3, this sound is a quirk that isn't faithful to the photorealistic style of Pikmin's visual world, but is clear, recognizable, and charming to the player. I hope these bits of trivia have proven interesting, and gotten you thinking about the care that goes into game sound design, no matter where a sound comes from. And a huge thank you to Davogato, a user and my friend who recorded the Pikmin 3 footage for this video. And I know convolution reverb can be a bit, well, convoluted. So might I recommend the Convology XT plugin from the IR recording company ImpulseRecord.com as a starting point. It's a free plugin for most digital audio workstations where you can get a feel for the effectiveness of convolution reverb. I'm not sponsored by Impulse Record. I'm just a fan of reverb. And with that, I'm Scruffy, and thank you very much for listening.